Hey everybody, welcome to the shop. I'm Brent. So last time we started the build of my shop back enclosure. Um, we got the cabinet built, we got the acoustic treatment in it, we built the uh, exhaust baffle, and everything is working great. Uh, couldn't be happier with how much quieter uh, the shop back is than it was. But there were still a few things that needed to be done. Um, I need to install a, a dust deputy in it, I want to build out a hose reel, and I want to use the top of it as a downdraft table. So in this video, we're going to build out the hose reel. Uh, I thought that would be the most useful uh, piece. It's kind of a pain to roll the cabinet around. I have a really short hose on it right now. It'd be nice to have a, a 20 foot hose that I can just pull out, not have to roll the cabinet for simple cleanup jobs. So spoiler alert, I've already built it. Uh, super happy with how it works but it wasn't uh, a smooth build as I'd hoped. Uh, I ran into some things and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll show you, we'll, we'll talk about them when we get to them. Um, maybe I can help you avoid some of those pitfalls if you decide to build something like this. So let's start out by taking a look at the, uh, the design for this. So here's the design for our hose reel. It's pretty straightforward. We just have a reel sandwiched between a couple um, pieces of MDF here. Uh, these are just going to slide into the cabinet and uh, on this side we've got a, a hole through the uh, outside panel that's going to allow the handle to slide in and drive the hose reel itself. Let us spin it. Um, and on the other side we've got an adapter that will allow us to plug in the hose coming from the shop vac. And then that will go through the middle of the Lazy Susan bearings that we're using to connect the reel to the walls and there's a bearing hose uh, hose bearing adapter in there that lets the hose spin freely on this side on the inside so that it doesn't uh, twist the hose and uh, there's a couple of 3d printed parts in this to allow it to connect to the hose because i couldn't find um, pieces that would let me connect everything together so that's one of the great things about 3d printing um, let's take a closer look at the inside here so if I turn off oops turn off the right parts here we can see the inside a little better here you can see the how the adapter is going to go through and we'll be able to turn the inside and let the hose wrap up around our spacers here so that's that's the design um, now all we have to do is go out and build it hopefully everything works as we designed it all right i thought i would show a little bit of the build here and show you where i messed up um, here we're just cutting out one of the sides of the reels uh, don't need to be real accurate here this thing's not going to be spinning at high speed or anything so just getting it close to a, a circle here we're cutting out the pass through for the hose and there you can see the 3d template that i printed to help me um, align the holes for the lazy susan bearings and the different adapters and things that i'm connecting to um, the reel and it turned out to be very useful everything lined up really well here you can see me test fitting the Lazy Susan bearing, trying to figure out what hardware I need to make this thing work. See me assembling it for the first time, but not the last. Yep, so here's the inside piece. So again, just cutting out the hole for the hose pass through there. And we're going to use the uh, template again to show us where to drill the holes. And I think we're, I think I'm putting in the holes for the adapter, the hose adapter right now. So there you can see the 3D printed hose adapter I used. Don't over tighten plastic. <laughs> I cracked it there and I had to put some CA glue to hopefully hold it together. And here we're just marking out the other side of the Lazy Susan. 
And this is where I realized I didn't use long enough bolts. So I have to take the whole thing apart and swap out those studs that I have put, put into the Lazy Susan. No biggie, just a little bit of extra work. Alright, so now we'll connect the side on. Everything went together good, the whole, holes all aligned. And there we're just testing it out. Everything seems to spin and work. So, putting this thing together is turning out to be a lot trickier than I had thought it would be. Uh, it was really easy to design and just slap together in Fusion. Uh, but when I go to actually put it together, I realize that I don't have access to the bolts from certain sides with these lazy uh, Susan bearings. Um, so, yeah, I ended up having to bolt, use, use nuts and bolts, can't screw. There's no way to get a screw going both directions on them. Um, but I was able to use the bolts and nuts, as you saw. Um, but now I'm getting, I'm thinking ahead and thinking about how I'm going to attach everything else together. And um, uh, these are the spacers that are going to go between the wheels uh, of the reel. And I need to attach these to both this side and to the other side of the, of the reel. Um, so the plan is that I'm going to use pocket screws to go ahead and screw into this one so I don't have to take this apart. And then on the other one, I'm going to go ahead and get it all together, have all the hardware mounted on it, have all the holes drilled in it, and then set it down. And then I think I can screw through it and attach those together. So um, I think that's going to work. I'm sure I'll probably run into other things as I go, but that's the plan for now. So let's see what happens. Here's just a little more footage, putting the uh, pocket holes and mounting the spacers. Pretty straightforward. You can see how I, the plan was to wrap the hose around the spacers as it comes out of the, the elbow there. And so this is the other side of the reel. Now this side is going to actually uh, be where the handle connects and drives it. So I'm putting a square hole in the center of this one so that the handle um, can grab onto this side to spin it. So this is where I realized I probably should have marked this out why I had an accurate center point. But I eyeball it and it comes out really good. So it worked out in the end. So. You can see I've got the Studs already mounted there to hook to the other side of the cabinet. And this is where I'm trying to align the two sides and struggling because they're not perfect circles. But I'm trying to get it as centered as I can. And then once I think I've got it pretty good, I'm going to go ahead and clamp it in place so that we can screw the side down. Here I'm trying to make marks where I think the screws should hit everything, and there I missed. So, yeah. This is where I realize that I've got a problem. And I left this in here at regular speed so you can watch the expression on my face, because there's a moment, you'll see it here in just a second, where the, the realization hits me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I just realized that uh, these things are not perfectly aligned. And I'm checking it right here to see how, just eyeballing how out of a line they actually are. And now I'm pondering, how can I fix this? How do I get perfect alignment? <laughs> I think it's time to go take a break and think about it for a little while. Hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> 
All right, ran into the next challenge. I realized after putting this together that the two bearings have to be in perfect alignment because both sides are gonna be fixed in the uh, enclosure. There's not gonna be any flex at all. So the way that I'm hooking it together is not gonna work. I'm never gonna get the alignment uh, perfect. But I did decide, I did come up with a way to get around that and that's to replace the wood blocks that I'm using as uh, separating the two halves of the reel. And I'm gonna replace it with threaded rod. And I'm gonna run the rod all the way from one Lazy Susan bearing to the other one. And all the four of those I think should be, it should be stiff enough and it should keep it in perfect alignment. So I'm gonna have to undo a lot of stuff here um, and basically replace the eight bolts with threaded rod on the, uh, on the two Lazy Susan bearings. But I think once I get that, we should be getting pretty close. So uh, next is to get that done. All right, so it's time to undo what we just did. So we'll remove the spacers and we're gonna replace it with some threaded rod. Unfortunately, we have to take it all apart. And now I'm making my second mistake. Or third, or fourth. I don't know how many this is. But if you notice, I took my threaded rod and I set the spacer up there so I would uh, know how long to cut my threaded rod. Yeah, the problem is the threaded rods actually go through two different sides of the MDF, so they, it actually needs to be an inch longer than the spacers. Yeah, right about here, I slowed it back down so you can uh, see the moment when I realized that. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's not gonna work. Can I get away with it? No, I probably can't. Time to go take another break. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna try this again. And actually it's good that it worked out this way because I switched over to a, a bigger threaded rod. I went to a, a half inch, or not half inch, that's quarter inch. Um, stainless steel rod. I think it made it uh, stiffer and um, just overall a, a better choice. Uh, of course I didn't want to hacksaw through the quarter inch stainless steel so I busted out the bandsaw for this. Um, go over here and clean up the cuts from the bandsaw. And then we'll start installing the threaded rod. So I put a nut um, on both sides of the board so I could tighten them against each other. Here, I'm a little boogered on the threads there, so I had to clean them up. That's why you see me using the vise over there. All right, one half done. Now we'll take the other side apart. And I, I did have to drill out the holes and the Lazy Susan uh, holes as well. But it was worth it in the end to use the quarter inch. All right. I'm doing a little cleanup here. Now it's, try to, it's time to try to join the two sides together, so... Get everything lined up, drop the Lazy Susan over, put on the nuts. There we go. Now we just have to install the sides. Now I'm, I'm making the other side. This will be the side that will mount to the side of the cabinet that will have the 
handle going through it. At this point, I don't know what size hole I'm going to put in, so I'm just using this template to mark out the holes for um, the Lazy Susan bearings. So, go ahead and drill them out. I think we're going to go do a test fit, make sure that the holes line up. Yep, everything seems to line up good. And now we're sticking it in the cabinet. We need to transfer those holes to the cabinet so that when we slide it in there, it can slide through both the side and the side of the cabinet. I'm, clamp, I'm putting a little clamp in there just to hold it up against the side. And there we are. We've mounted it in the cabinet. This gives you a good idea of how it fits in there. Mm -hmm. You can see where the handle is going to slide in and hook to the reel. Now we're uh, putting the handle together there, the part that I 3D printed, and testing it out, make sure that it works. Just thought I'd show a quick demo of the hose reel actually in action here. So just grab it and pull. Pull out up to 20 feet. And then when you want to put the hose away, there you go. Simple as that. All right, well, there you go. We've got a uh, hose reel completed. Um, I've used it a few times, it works great. Very happy with how easy it is to pull the hose out and, and reel it up. Still got a couple things I'm gonna do. Um, I'm gonna 3D print a handle for the end of this, probably paint the, the uh, aluminum black, trim those bolts down, um, just some minor cleanup. But other than that, I uh, couldn't be happier with how well this hose reel works um, and the way it turned out. So we still got a couple more things we're gonna do to this cabinet, but that may not be the next video. I've got some other things coming up that are kind of taking priority. Uh, and I think the next video that you're gonna see, we're gonna be working on building a heat treat oven. So stay tuned for that. If you like what you see, uh, hit the like button, hit subscribe if you wanna see how this thing turns out eventually. Um, otherwise, have a great day. We'll see you next time. Thanks.